Well, hey guys, you're probably just wondering what the heck that just was. Well, uh, it's day one million of the COVID lockdown and I came into the shop because I have all of this gear all to myself and I figured I'd use it. So I've been shooting uh, macro footage because it's a thing I used to love doing when I had time to do it. And now that no one has anything to do and all the time in the world, and I've got all this gear, I figured I'd shoot some macro stuff. I love practical effects. I don't like leaving anything up to post if I can avoid it. Um, and you'll probably see that in the stuff that I shoot for AFL. Uh, in my episodes, I use stuff like beam splitters. I do this gla glass plate photography, force perspective. Every director has their own approach. And sometimes you just can't avoid visual effects like you have green screen or whatever. But whenever I can, I like doing practical effects. And the one that you guys just saw is called glass plate photography. And it uses this tent of exploding light here. I don't actually know who invented it, but uh, the guy who mastered it in like the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, he's still around. His name's Doug Trumbull. And you've definitely seen his work, you probably just didn't know it. He's done stuff like 2001 A Space Odyssey, Close Encounters of a Third Kind, Star Trek, Blade Runner, And then I fell in love with his work from Tree of Life. I saw the opening sequence and I had to figure out how that stuff was done because it just looks so good. I ended up doing a bunch of research, finding his papers online, recreating some of his effects. Uh, and then I put them into a dance film and here's a little clip from that. So over the course of the next few videos, I'm just gonna try and take you guys along for the ride with me as I'm experimenting. Um, I don't have a goal in mind for this. This is just me messing around, which is kind of perfect. Doug Trumbull himself calls this organic photography. You don't go after a goal. You just set up situations where cool stuff can happen and film it, that's it. And sometimes you get mind blowing stuff and there's a lot of days where it's just ugh, but it's all part of the process. So I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. So let me walk you through this Kind of a mess of a rig I've made on my own. So I have a couple C-stands I stole from Chuck and then a couple Area 60s I stole from Casey. On the far side, you can see a Dito. Um, and then I've just got a bunch of grip gear. So I've flagged off the light from everything that it shouldn't be hitting. And then in the middle, I just have a junky piece of glass. You don't need anything fancy. And uh, you can see I've got an old uh, bit of ink on there. And then on the other side, I have our dolly set up. Um, day one that I was doing this, you can see that I was on a tripod. That sucked because I couldn't move the camera around. So now I've got it set up on this guy just so I can reframe my shot. Because adding that into it made it way cooler. Being able to basically fly through space was awesome. Um, and then I've got our red Gemini and I've got the Venus Lava Pro blends on here. And then I've just taped off the end of it to get rid of the reflection. And then the whole thing is in a duvetine tent just because I need as much black as I can get. So now that I've got Misha's super sweet wheelie chair, we can get started. So if you want to try doing this at home, basically all you need are your camera, piece of glass parallel to the floor, some black underneath it, bit of alcohol, and some white paint. We're going to keep it really simple to start. Don't tell Misha I had this much paint near the camera or nor that I had this much paint on the dolly because they're not going to be stoked about that. So the key ingredient to all this is the paint. So uh, all this is just acrylic paint mixed with water and then you pour it onto a little bed of alcohol or uh, soap, um, maybe even some paint thinner and it all acts in different ways. Um, I've got the cheapest alcohol I could get, which was Alberta Pure. For anyone in the States, Alberta is our Alabama crossed with Texas. All right, so why don't I walk you guys through a bit of my process. So. This is just alcohol. Put a little bit of that on the glass. Then grab a Kim wipe. And I'm gonna spread this out all across the glass. And I'm not doing this to clean it. I'm actually just doing this to give the ink something to run in. Don't forget to roll your camera. Boom. And then just a single drop of white paint to start. And I'm just gonna find my center with my pinky, which is right there. And you'll see 
this actually ends up looking pretty cool. So another thing this process teaches you is patience. So one of the things I've figured out is to not just keep chucking ink at the plate of glass. If you just leave something very simple and just let it do its thing, it ends up looking amazing. Okay, so that looks pretty awesome. So now I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of black paint just to see what happens. Grab that. That kind of looks like a black hole in the middle of some sort of nebula or something. And it's open to interpretation. That could be cellular life, whatever. It all kind of depends on the context that you put it in your edit. But this kind of stuff is so abstract, you can use it for anything. And I honestly, you get super cool stuff out of just really simple colors. The other really good thing about shooting black and white is that you can add the color later in post. So this is the clip as it is as I shot it. And then you can see here, I've dropped in just a random nebula background, but I just use the colors from it in the lighten mode, or you can do overlay or all the other different blending modes in Premiere, and then you can start warping them and doing really cool stuff. Here's the one thing that I can do right now that you guys probably can't, because you probably don't have a full peewee dolly, but I'm gonna boom down into this and see what it looks like. And this is gonna require both hands, so one sec. Oh man, okay, so. This is one of the great reasons to have a probe lens is because my lens is maybe an inch away from the, the glass plate right now. You still get this insane look out of it. I love this stuff. Okay, gonna try a bit more white and just see what happens. Oh man, it's dripping everywhere. Oh no. Oh God. Let's just do a huge mess now. Why not? And let's just do a bit of gold now just to see what happens. Oh, that looks awesome. I don't even know what that looked like, but I loved it. I mean, it, for a second, it kind of looked like a coffee commercial with like cream and coffee mixing together or like an ice cream commercial. Then it looked like space and it looked like a nebula. This is, like, this is what I love about this stuff is that you just experiment. You just throw stuff at the glass and then it looks awesome. So now that we've done black and white and a little bit of gold just because I got carried away, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we add some solvents into it. Let's start with uh, just like two simple colors and soap and I'll show you what that does. Let's start with the purple. Let's try some blue, because this always looks awesome. Now here's where the magic happens. This is just dish soap, but watch this. And that is why I love practical effects, because that is seven or eight drops of ink and two drops of dish soap, a little bit of time, and it looks like a nebula sitting out in space. And according to every visual effects artist I've ever worked with, doing it this way is better, easier, more fun, and less computer intensive, because they have to render every single particle moving when they do it on their computers. Here, it's just random. I'm gonna leave this one running in the background while I wrap this up, because like I said, giving it time to just do cool stuff is completely worth it. All right guys, well I think that's pretty successful for, you know, episode one of whatever this is, Dave's crazy camera experiments or something. But, you know, I think uh, for like an intro to glass plate photography, that's a pretty good way to start. I think when we come back, I'm gonna try to start throwing some ultraviolet light and some highlighters, see if I can get some stuff to glow, maybe do some really high speed stuff, which not everyone can do at home, I know, but it's still fun to experiment and show you what you can do if you have the right tools. So whenever things get back up to speed here at the studio, I'll try and walk you through more of the practical effects that I love doing because I feel like they're a dying art form that I wanna revitalize. I feel like it's a language that's kind of going away and we're losing it to visual effects. Um, we're doing stuff like beam splitters and force perspective and lots of cool stuff with some of our series. But until then, like, subscribe, check out our other shows, try this at home because it's super fun. And thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.